Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Saber Red 360 series, the ticketing module. This is the last meeting of the series that began on Tuesday, presenting Air Module, continued yesterday with fares and pricing, and arrives to an end today, covering the ticketing part. The goal of this initiative is to reinforce the benefits of Saber Red 360 and promote all the advantages. Now let's uh, review the housekeeping details for this meeting. The session will last 75 minutes. Uh, all lines have been muted to guarantee a correct development of the session, to avoid background noises that may affect the quality of the sound, and to make sure our presenter today is not distracted by that. Effective now, chat window is active. You can send your questions or comments through the chat and we will pass them to our guest speaker. Please make sure that when you do so, you select the option all panelists and any of us, uh, Carlos and myself, can see the question and uh, address it accordingly. This session is being recorded to be uploaded later in our YouTube channel and to share with you later. Within the next 24 hours, we will send you via email a supporting material set, including the presentation delivered today the recording and the link to the customer satisfaction survey. Now the agenda that we will cover is the following. Ticketing graphic module, automated exchanges, automated refunds, quick refunds and exchanges, and a schedule, a schedule change reissue. Now let me introduce ourselves. Uh, Leandro Gentile and um, my name is Leandro Gentile and Carolina Ricarte, my colleague, will not be participating today she, she's, since she is having a time off, um, but she will be uh, very much missed today. Uh, I, will, I personally will moderate today's session. We are, uh, Carolina and myself are responsible for the marketing campaign uh, team for Latin America and the Caribbean. We are based in Montevideo, Uruguay. And uh, my mission uh, today is to monitor the chat session and pass the question on to our speaker, as well as being attentive to your comments. In case of any questions are not answered, we will try to do so uh, in the supporting material set that we will send uh, within 24 hours hours. Now let's welcome our guest speaker for today, Carlos Egochiaga, the, the delivery specialist for the region. Along with the next 75 minutes, he will share the content mentioned in the agenda. Welcome, Carlos. Thank you very much, Leandro. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here with you in, in this, our last session of today. And as you mentioned, we will cover the, the ticketing the ticketing part so let me share my screen right now and um you will see it so let's share my screen do you see it right now i believe so uh yep right we can see it okay excellent so we will cover now ticketing and exchanges and also refunds okay we will try to do this. Um, we'll effort ourselves to do it, you know, everything in graphical, everything that is possible to be done in graphical. So let's start it. The first thing that we need when we dealing with ticketing and the related topics is we will need our Saver Red 360. We need also the printers assigned on our Saver Red 360. If we don't assign printers specifically, especially the ticketing printer, we will not be able to perform the ticketing or any other related um, topic with that. So to do so, we go into manual command and in manual command, we usually perform PPS1, which is actually the printer profile. And then if we do display S display P, we will see the printers assigned. This is the ticketing printer. I am in a Jamaican, uh, training room right now. This is the hard copy printer and the itinerary printer here. Those are into the PPS1, which is the printer profile. 
the advantage of doing this is that wherever I moved, if the ticketing printer, if the profile is done that way, I, I will assign the printers to all this to all the areas, and that way, regardless the area I am, I, I will be able to issue my tickets. The second thing I need now that I have my printer designed is my PNR. So I go here into the PNR tab and I pull up my reservation. I can pull it up by last name or I can change it to the record locator. I'm going to do it by last name. And I will see here my reservation, which is this one. And now I have here my itinerary. The third thing I need is uh, pricing, a PQ record. So let's see if I have a price quote here. I don't have a price quote. So I need to price in this and then I will be able to issue my ticket. So I'm going to price. As you remember yesterday, I do click here on these three dots and I have here the price. I will do a WP only when I'm going to a segment select the Kingston Atlanta, Atlanta Kings. And I will do price. Okay, here I have the pricing and I will save price. Now I have my PQ stored, I can then retrieve my record. If you store your first yesterday, you need to do it right now. You need to do it again. It says about something of the uh, <coughs> of the segments, and that is because I have an Atlanta YYC in the middle. And I will simply and then retrieve one more time. Now, if everything goes okay, I will IR it just in case in order to have. I will be able to see now my price quote in here. And if I do click, I have here my price quote. And everything is fine now. I am going to issue this ticket then. How the process starts? First thing I need to do it's going into the workflows. Here in this icon, I have the workflows. Now if I click here, I have issue ticket or EMD. So I click in here and the system will ask me, I mean, the process, the graphical process of issuing ticket is based on PQ. If I don't have a PQ, I am not going to be able to issue my ticket graphically. I certainly can issue a ticket on cryptic without a PQ. But if I don't use a PQ, uh, the system will do is if I send the command to ticketing, the system will price it and then the price it gets is the price he's going to issue. If I have a PQ and I have ticketing from a store fair active, what the system will do is will issue the PQ. So it is very important for you as an agent to verify that you have ticketing from a store fair active on your p and oh, oh, sorry, on your pseudo, on your PCC. With that, you will have the ability to issue a store fair within the same day. So if I store a fair at 9 a.m., the fair changes at midday, and I want to issue the ticket at 3 p.m., and I have ticketing from a store fair active, what the system will do is issue the PQ that I stored at 9 a.m. It's not going to look for the actual price that we know change it at midday. Ticketing from a store fair will issue the store, the fair that you store within the same day, not 24 hours, within the same day, up to 11, 59 p.m. And that's the reason why 
you have to graphically set up or set the PQ that you, that you want to issue, like in this case. So I'm going to subselect it. But prior to that, I need to mention issue ticket or EMD give us the chance to issue the ticket, issue the exchange, and issue any ancillary services that I bought. So if I bought luggage, or I bought unconfined manual, or I bought pet, whatever I bought as an EMD, it will be here. So I issue my ticket and then I issue my ancillary. Let's go for the PQ. I click on select. Here I have to look for the form of payment. How am I going to pay this ticket? I can pay with the store form of payment that I have on my PNR, if I have it. If I create my PNR and I store there the form of payment, I can say the system is use the store form, the store FOP that is on my PNR. Or I can choose cash or check or invoice on account, other, or use FOP from PQ, which is also valid. If I am using two form of payments, the two form of payments needs to be added on the PQ. If I use a combination of cash and credit or two credit cards, it is good to have them stored on the PQ, right? Or use another credit card. Now, the fact that I can choose invoice as a form of payment, that doesn't mean that it's um, the correct form of payment. You are in different countries, you probably have different BSPs, right? So you will, will use the form of payment that is correct as per UBSP, right? Let's choose uh, this cash, cash. What's the commission? I will do a percentage commission of 1% in that case. And I have advanced qualifiers here. I can, I can override the carrier. I can add an endorsement. I can issue a net fare. I can relate this ticket to a passenger name. I can add a print and invoice if I need it, or I can add a tour code if that were a case. Let me add an endorsement just in case for you to see. So I'm going to add an endorsement, test ticket, for example. And I just click on issue. If everything goes okay, my ticket will be issued. Let's see what this, um, the test system does. Oh, passenger security data required. Please update and retry. I didn't have the passenger security data inserted here. So let's do it. How am I going to do? I'm going to click here, add to PNR, security information, and I will do the secure flight. What type of secure flight? Secure flight. For all the segments, my date of birth. Gender. I'm going to add to the piano. It's added. Then I add and retrieve. Uh, and I end and retrieve again. This is because of the itinerary I have with the Atlanta JJC inside. Okay, now I have it. I will ignore retry just in case because I sent a secure, the secure data there. And just in case the airline responds back to the PNR, I prefer to ignore retry. And then since now it is there, just go into the workflows, issue ticket, I issue this, select, the form of payment will be cash, the commission percentage will be one, and I'm going to add an endorsement, which will be GST ticket, and I'm going to issue. Let's see what's happened. 
form of payment restricted to credit card type only. Okay, perfect. That's perfect. Credit card type only. This error is okay because this PCC of Jamaica is set up for credit card type only. So doing graphically, I have this option and I see this. I will see the same error if I do cryptic, but it, it saved me for me to ticket it in cash. So let's try credit. We do this, I'll do select. Form of payment will be another credit card. And let's do this. I don't need the security code. The approval code, it will come automatically from from the system. The system will knock the door to Visa and obtain the credit uh, and obtain the approval code. I will add the commission percentage of one. And as advanced qualifier, I will add an endorsement saying test ticket. Now, one thing that you need to know about the approval code. The approval code will come automatically from the system. That's something Sabre Retro 360 and previous version of Sabre does all the time. We go to Visa, we knock the door, we ask for the approval code and Visa gives it to us. In some countries, this is not uh, possible to be done. Even though the system does it, on those countries it's not possible to do it because of regulations. There are countries in Latin America, for example, in which you have to go into a portal to get the approval code. And then you have to use that approval code here. Because on that country, they have that procedure to prevent fraud, for example. So even though the system can go and, re and request that approval, the government of that country, the rules of that country says, you don't go that way, you have to go to this portal. Other countries, other BSP countries are more complicated. They have some airlines going to a portal and some airlines does it directly on the system. So the fact that you have it here is to be used, is to be of use, but you have to use it according to your regulations. If in your country, you have to go to a portal to get the approval code for the credit card, you have to do that prior to came here. Let's try to issue the ticket then. Let's see what happened. It does. So my ticket is already issued. Now, one important thing is that uh, sometimes, depending on your agency, the system will close the PNR. If I do graphically, the PNR is closed behind the scenes, and I will not have the need to close my PNR. Okay? So let's see. If I issue my ticket, my ticket is supposed to be here. There is no ticket to display because because I um, yeah I am not refreshing this so just to be sure and just to rest assured you know what I'm gonna try it I'm going to ignore and retry and retrieve and see if the ticket is there if this PCC has set up that way the system will close the PNR as soon as I issue my ticket Let's see. And if not, then we know that something went wrong. Let's see. Ticketing. Oh, here is my ticket. So it is true. The system issued the ticket and closed the record. I need to refresh it. And that's why I do ignore and retry to see my ticket. And here I have all the details. This is my ticket number, issue date, the ticketing details. The coupons are open. The form of payment is here with with an approval code by the system. Here I have the taxes and for calculation that are involved in this. And if I want to issue air extras after I issue my ticket, let's say tomorrow, 
I just do click here and I will have the air extras available for me to use. If they are available in this case, baggage is not available and pets are not available. Maybe because of where I am right now or because this is a test environment, but you have that option in here, right? What else do we have? City endorsements. You remember when I issued my ticket, I added an endorsement. Well, that addition is in this part. It's on the last part of the endorsement. If I wanted to go in the first place, I have to override the endorsement. And on that way, the test ticket I put it here will be right here. But if I override it, I have to write everything. So I will have to write TST ticket slash no ref slash changes permitted. I will have to retype the whole endorsement if I want this to be here. And this is basically how I issue a ticket. Any questions so far? No question through the chat uh, yet, uh, Carlos. Okay. Excellent. So as you see, it's very, very simple to issue a ticket. You don't need to know any cryptics and uh, every option that you need is there for you. Now, one thing to remember is we have a golden rule. I didn't mention yesterday. I was about it, but something happened and I missed that part. But we have a golden rule that you have always to remember when you work with the system. The way I price, the way I store the way I store the fare, the way I issue my ticket, and the way I issue my ticket is the way I will exchange my ticket. So if I price with a specific passenger type, like ITX, I have to store it with ITX. I have to issue with ITX, and I have to exchange it with ITX. The only exception would be that when I am going to exchange on that new itinerary, there is no ITX packs type available, but that will be, you know, the golden rule in this case. So don't forget the way I price, the way I store, the way I store, the way I ticket, the way I ticket, the way I change. Okay. So prior to continue, uh, do we have any comment or question, uh, Leandro? I, I, I see some pop-ups. You yes, are, we have uh, a couple of questions. Okay. Yeah, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, Jolaid, <laughs> um, Jolaid is asking, please do another example for ticketing. And how do you print the, the actual ticket? Oh, the ticket actually goes to the printer. You, you want a physical, if you want to physically print something? Yeah, well, uh, if you want to, oh, let's, do, let's do it one more time. And Prior sorry, to... Carlos, okay, uh, just, just for you to, to know the next comment from, from uh -huh. I, uh, please repeat, uh, uh, but in endor and in, in the endorsement box, I'm not sure if, uh -huh. I, I believe that maybe adding something in the endorsement box. Uh-huh, I did, but I believe he probably she wants, or he wants to make an example in which I add something in the beginning of the endorsement. Let's do it. Let's do both things. Okay, do you remember that? Um, well, first thing first, this ticket, let's say I have to void it, okay? And if I'm going to issue another ticket, I have to void this one. So how, how to void my ticket? I will click again on the uh, workflows and here I have cancel ticket or EMD. So I click here, the system identifies the only ticket available in my system, on my PNR, sorry. I click on continue and it will ask me to actually certify that I am voiding the ticket. So I will continue with this. And now my ticket is void. I will close here. And as uh, as I used to, I will enter retrieved. Verify order and then retrieve again. And it's done. Now let's see my ticket. 
I have the ticketing details. I have issue at uh, 30 of September at 1019 my time and I void it at 1026. So now I don't have a ticket. So let's redo it. I go here into the workflows and I do issue ticket. This is my PQ. I select that PQ. I use another card as a form of payment. I will do Visa. On the 12th of the 21. Let's say that I want to use the approval code that I used on my previous ticket. I can do it. It's the same day, it's the same amount. It was a couple of minutes ago. It doesn't make any sense to ask for another approval code unless I want it. But in that case, the customer will have the credit card with two, uh, with two amounts. One will go and process and the other is going to be refunded to him on the credit card. That's something that the bank does, but he has to wait. My customer will wait until the bank actually moves that money back to his credit card. So I would use a, uh, an approval code here. It's I am just made it up and I'm going to select my commission percentage and I'm going to do one and I'm going to advance qualifier and I'm going to override endorsement. If I override the endorsement, that means that I have to do TST ticket and then a slash non end non ref or non end refundable. Let's say and I will issue my ticket. And my ticket has been successfully issued. So I close here, I go into my luggage and I will do ignore and retrieve with a lot of confidence. And my ticket is supposed to be there, my new ticket. Let's go into ticketing and I have the tickets now. This is my new ticket. And I have it here. The approval code that I used as manual. And here I have the endorsement with the TS ticket first and then all the rest of the information that I added manually. Now, one thing that we missed was the printer part. How do I actually print it? If I go into here, into issue ticket, here on the advanced qualifiers, I have print an invoice. So if I want to print an invoice, I will do it. Now, do you remember that we have my printer's design here? Hard copy and itinerary printer and invoice printing. By default, when I issue my ticket and I have this design, the information goes to the printer. I don't know if we still print things, right? Because we usually send the information through email. But if you want uh, to have that printing, it's possible to do it. And if you want to actually print an invoice, you can do it on that way. Anyway, if it's not printing, that doesn't mean that the document is not done. The document is there. Here are my two tickets, the ticket I issue, the void and the new ticket. That information is on the system. The itinerary is created. The invoice has been generated. Let's see. Right? If I have an invoice set up on my system, the invoice has been done. And I have the ability to reprint it if I need it or to resend it if I need it. If the customer is using Tripcase, he goes into Tripcase as he, he will be able to see the ticket, the itinerary, and the invoice in there. Any other question? Yes, Carlos, we have a couple of questions. Yes. Uh, Daisy is asking if 
if I book a PNR in graphical and store the, the price also graphically, can we issue the ticket in the common way? Absolutely, no problem at all. Yeah, you can do it. Remember, if you do it, if you do it in the in the, in the traditional way, let's say with commands, you will have to issue the ticket, ask the system to issue the documents, and close the PNR manually. There are three things that you need to do if you do it if you do it manually by commands, right? But yeah, you can do it. You do the entry for the ticketing, the entry for sending the documentation to the printers, which means basically uh, that, and then to close the PNR. If you if you don't close the PNR faster, you, you can face, for example, simultaneous changes. And on that way, you need to ignore the PNR, you need to void the ticket manually, and then issue again. But yeah, you can do it. If you're used to commands and, and you can do it faster and you feel more comfortable, yeah, you can do that. Perfect, thank you very much. And then I have, um... Uh, Jolie is asking, as an agent, how do you know the commission amount, or do you add um, what do, what your supervisor said? Well, basically, how how to know which commission to add there, and when when issuing. It. And I is asking, what EMD means? Okay. Okay, regarding commissions, actually. The information about the commission will depend on the country, on the airline, and on the market. So, on my country, I have airlines that are zero commission, 1% commission, and we have one airline that has 6% commission, or we had, because the, the airline is not operating anymore, but we used to have an airline with 6% commission. Where this information is holding for you, since there are a variety of conditions, uh, there is no way on Saber as a system to store that information because it's because it's it's not so, something a standard in the world, right? So, how do I know? We need to have it documented. So, you as an agent in your country knows that your agency is working with all the airlines you need to know the commission if you, if you issue tickets. Basically, what you will do is how many airlines I, I, I work with, I issue tickets with, right? And what are the validating carriers I use? Because certainly I, there are 3,000 airlines in the world, but if I want to issue a ticket with an airline that is not BSP on my country, I will need to use another, another carrier, another validating carrier. So that is information that I need to have. I am not going to make it up because the ticket is money. So if I don't know the amount of commission that I have to add it, I need to ask, or I have to have it somewhere store. Uh, agencies usually have that store a store on a place, or they have a solution that they made up automatically, or they have it that documented. So you go into the document, you see, oh, this airline is 0%, perfect. Other countries are very easy, it's zero for everybody. Okay, it's zero for everyone. Now, we are talking about commission here. We are not talking about the extras that you receive. We are not talking about overseeing here. This is the local policy of the airline. The airline in my country is zero commission to everyone then is zero commission. Oh, but in my case is 2%, okay? Because it's your specific case. You have a specific relation with the airline and the airline is giving you 2%. Go and add it 2%, right? That would be, if I don't know, my agency is supposed to have a place where all that information is stored. So I can go there and use that document. And there certainly will be a person responsible responsible for that document to be updated. But that will be my answer on commissions at this time. Now, regarding to EMD, EMD is stands for 
uh, I don't, oh, sorry. It goes out of my mind. <laughs> uh, I'm going to explain what an EMD is. EMD is the document. Uh, I believe uh, some others call uh, MCOs, right? But it's not actually an MCO. An EMD is a document generated by the system that holds information related an additional thing that I am that I am buying. For example, for this trip, Kingston to Toronto, the document that says that my customer is going into this place, into these planes and go from Kingston to Toronto is the ticket. I issue my ticket and it's paid. And with that, this customer goes to the airport and gets his flights. Now, the fare that he's using is the cheapest first of all, and he has right to nothing. He can, he, he doesn't have free baggage. He doesn't have the ability to go with his dog in the plane, nothing. But the airline is giving him the option to go with, with his dog for a price and to add a luggage for a price. So the document that says, that my customer has paid for the dog to go and for the luggage to have is the EMD. Electronic miscellaneous document. That is, thank you very much, I saw it. I, it was out of my mind for a second. It's an electronic miscellaneous document. So that document shows that my customer has paid for the dog and paid for the luggage. That's an EMD, right? And that would be any other question or comment, uh, Andrew? Uh, no, no further question uh, on the chat. Okay, excellent. So I issue my ticket now, and as you see, it's, it's, it's pretty nice and simple. Now let's try to go into the next topic. Let's try to do an exchange. So that means that my customer is changing his flight. Let's try to do it. First thing first, we need to change the segment. So let's try to make a change here. I do click on these three dots. I click on modify it and I'm going to change the date. It goes Atlantic Kingston on the 10th of October. He's changing to the 17th. If I do click in change and there is the, then the class is available on that day, he will do the change for me. Okay, apparently I have it here. And I have it with SS now. Same class of service, same everything. Let's try to do it now. I go into the workflows and I go into make change ticket. The ticket number is in here. And I go click on next. I have the ticket. This is the right ticket I have here, the one I did manually, and the test ticket I added here on the endorsement. So I do click on next. And I have here my ticket number for my passenger for all the segments, pricing options, and advanced qualifiers and passenger type. Why do I have all these things? Because I am doing an exchange and I have to reflect in here the conditions of my original ticket, which are the conditions of my original PQ which are the conditions of my original pricing. Remember, the way I price, the way I store, the way I store, the way I ticket, the way I ticket, the way I change. When I issue my ticket, I use a passenger type, I need to add it in here. When I issue my ticket, I do it by segments, I have to do it in here. When I issue my ticket, I, I do something with the price, then I have to reflect it here. Now, for exchange ticket, the pricing options are two. Price the current itinerary are rebooked to the lowest available fare. So, 
here we go. This exchange ticket module that you are seeing right now, graphical, is the automated exchanges one, which is the guaranteed by Sabre. So this exchange, if it's performed, will be guaranteed by us. If at some point this ticket has a problem or situation and there is a debit memo involved, we take care of that. We fight for you. Okay. Now, this uh, module, automated exchanges, has the ability to price the current itinerary or to rebook to the lowest available. What that means? The system will do a check and we'll see, okay, I have this new itinerary in this booking classes. I'm going to do the exchange against the ticket. I can do it. But you know what? I have detected that if I change this new itinerary on these other classes, the fair difference will be less benefit, and that is a benefit of my for my passenger, right? So if in regular conditions, I'm gonna pay a hundred dollar difference on the fare, changing those classes, he will pay 50. That is a check that he does always because his price current itinerary. The system is not going to change anything. He will do the check and it will says to me, you know what, if you lowest available fare, if you change this to these classes. If I want the system to actually book those new classes, I do rebook to the lowest available. So the system will perform the check. He will find that if he changed the classes, the booking classes of my PNR, the difference in the fare will be $50 instead of, of 100 and then he will rebook it. And it will show me that he rebooked. Am I available to do this? Yes, anytime. What could happen if, you, if I do the rebook to lowest available fare? That the difference could be minus, minus 100, minus 50. So it's in favor of the passenger. It's money that I have to return to refund to the passenger. Am I able to do that refund? to my client, I have the ability to do an MCO and give him the money back. On BSP, I believe the answer is no. You can you can say that on the, on the chat and confirm to me. If the answer is no, and I don't have the ability to create an MCO and give the money back to the customer, then I have to be very careful with this. Now, sometimes there are airlines, and this is the complicated part, so pay attention. There are airlines that when you have that minus 100, they use that amount for paying the penalty and for paying the difference in the fare. So the airline is not giving back the money to the customer, but is using the money to pay those differences. So it's still in favor of the passenger, even though he's not receiving his money back. Others, issue a document, an EMD document for that amount. So if there is a difference in the first of minus 50, some airlines issue an additional document saying these $50 are for the passenger to be used in the future. So you have to be very careful with that. So to be on the safe spot, my personal recommendation is leave it there on price current itinerary, see what the system does and take your decision after seeing it. Okay. I have some additional qualifiers here. Account code, branded ID, etc. So I will do click on next and see what happens. Now the system is doing his checking, it's checking, and it will show me if there is a difference in the fare, if there is a diff if, if there is a penalty involved, etc. And I will see the details. I am on the test system, so it takes a little, a little more than usual. Let's wait for it. Invalid this book, lower fare applies. Rebook Y and Y. So this is another thing that automated exchanges is doing. He do the checks and finds, hey, you know what? 
your new itinerary is in the wrong classes. It is supposed to be in Y. Okay, so I have to do that in order to do my exchange. Perfect. I then click the exchange. I know it's Y class, so I click this. I go into my luggage icon. I click on these three dots, modify, book in class, and this is supposed to be in Y, and this is supposed to be in Y, and then they do my change. And now that it's changing into Y, I go into the workflows, and I do into exchange ticket. I choose the ticket, I go next, I see the ticket, I do, I leave this and I do click on next and let's see what happened. So you are on the safe spot here because it's doing everything. The system is doing this automatically and it can read me all the information. Let's see what happened now. Remember, I am on the test environment to issue tickets. Perfect. Last day to purchase, 1st of October. So, a Paris in summary in Kingston. So, the equivalent fare, my exchange, my new fare, this is my reissue. This is the total taxes. I have and, uh, taxes, you know, to be uh, on my favor. So, in this case, this is the total amount in GMDs that I am going to exchange. This is the value of my exchange. The fee collection will be on EMD, in this case for this airline. And the total GMD is this one. There is no penalty here. If there were a penalty, it will be collected on an EMD. And that EMD, that electronic miscellaneous document, will be issued automatically by the system. If I perform my exchange, my exchange will be issue, will issue my new ticket and the EMD related to the penalty. This is automated exchanges. I give that information to my customer. My customer says, okay, I will call you later. I just quit the exchange, nothing happened. I quit the exchange, ignore and retry, and nothing has happened. Or I click on next, and the system will create and store my exchange. It will not issue my exchange. It will store it for me to see it. And the reason why is, see if I can do this, my PNR is on SS. My PNR is not closed. So I need to close my PNR prior to issue, to actually issue my exchange. But I can have it stored on my PNR for, for my review. So my customer says yes, I'm going to click on next and says, okay, you are going to save your PQR, what we call PQR, price quote reissue, right? Are you going to add additional collection? Are you going to add a tour code? Are you going to add something on the endorsement and the form of payment? Because you have a difference in the fare. So I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to, to, uh, to get commission. I'm going to add a tour code here, TST tour code. I'm going to, on the endorsement, I'm going to add here and a slash, I'm going to add here TST exchange and the form of payment we know is supposed to be credit card so i'm going to do visa my expiration date and i do need i do not i do need an approval code automatically so i'm, I'm going to leave this and i'm going to save my pqr and now my PQ is stored in here and I can review it. If I want to actually execute my exchange, I will have to close my PNR. And here is the information. Now, this is my PQ. Now, question for you. Oh, no. Prior to my question. Oh, let's do my question first. Is this exchange correct? If you follow me through the process, is this exchange correct?
and you tell me that on the chat. Is this correct or not? Do we have answers on the chat, Landro? Somebody says uh, yes. No one. No. <laughs> no one there so far. Well, no Monique one. is telling us yes. She's and dead. Marie is telling us no. <laughs> Which is exactly what I want. Did you and Marie, uh -huh. uh, okay, go ahead. No, uh, Trisha is asking. Repeat the question. Okay. Is this exchange this exchange that I have now on my screen? Because this is my exchange that I have a store. This exchange is correct. I, I may I go and just issue it, or this is wrong. I made a mistake here when I create my exchange. Trisha is, as, is saying no. Marie is a very very sure that is not correct. So yeah. And the answer is the no. The no is winning. The no is winning, and the no is the right question. Is the right answer. This is wrong. I made a mistake when I create my exchange. That is why you don't execute it. You store it there to first, so you see it and you look at it. Here it says Kingston to Atlanta, and then Atlanta, Atlanta again. But that is not true because. I issue a Kingston Atlanta Atlanta Kingston. Where is my Atlanta Kingston here? There is a mistake in here. And the reason of this mistake is that when I created the exchange, I do not use segment select. Do you remember when I issue my ticket, I issue Kingston Atlanta Atlanta Kingston? But when I do my exchange, I didn't say the system that the exchange is Kingston Atlanta Atlanta Kingston. In result, the system takes everything. And that's the reason why I have this strange thing here. That is the reason why the system does not execute the exchanges in automated exchanges. It goes and store the fare for you to review. So I have to do my exchange again. I will do this, I will do exchange ticket. I will click here, I will go next. I see my ticket, I click on next. And here I have to say I am exchanging Kingston Atlanta, Atlanta Kingston. And I will do next. Exchanges are, very, are probably the biggest topic in any conversation. We have to be very clear here. And now I have a different story here. It's a different amount and it's more likely to, right? There's the equivalent, there is everything in here. I click on next. I will do TST tour code. I will add here a slash TST exchange slash like this. And the form of payment will be credit card, Visa, and this is 12th of December. And I'll do a save my PQR. I can save any. Uh, as much as PQRs as I want. I'm going to display it now. And this is real. This is the one I want. Kingston, Atlanta, Atlanta Kingston. Here are the notes. And as you see here, the validating carries Delta. And then I have test exchange on the second line. So this is the one I added. The tour code I added is there, TST tour C, the validating carry is Delta, the form of payment, fee to be collected on a separate document not available because there was no penalty here. The total amount to be collected in this transaction is uh, 117,541 GMDs. This is the real thing. Now, if I wanna see it in a different way, 
I go here into my trip summary and I will do into my price quotes and I have PQRs in here. I know that this is not correct, so I'm going to delete it. If I have the, I have the ability to delete it in here. Let me check that. I have here the delete button. So I'm gonna click here on the delete. And now I have my PQR, which is this one. And let's try now. I'm going to end and retrieve in order to display it. If I want to see it here on manual command, I can do it, display PQR, and it's here. And if I do MD, I have all the information of my exchange. Kingston, Atlantic Kingston is here, you see? So that certifies that I am correct, and this is the Y class I use it. That's perfect. This is the one I need to use. I'm going to end and retrieve and see what happens. If I receive the, the HK on those systems, we will be able to reissue. Okay, add the receive from. Okay, I'm going to add my receive. My receive is coming automatically here. Add to the PNR. and I will end and retrieve. If something is missing, as you see here, they receive what's missing, the system is telling me. I'm gonna end and retrieve again because this is in related to, the, to that Atlanta YYC segment I have on the PNR. Then here we go. And I have it on HK already. So last piece of this exchange, I need to go and actually send the exchange execute my exchange. So I go here again into the workflows. I go again into issue ticket EMD. And I have here now my PQ, retain reissue. This is the PQ I want to exchange. I want to do it. I click on select. I added a commission if I need it or added an advanced qualifier like my tour code, my endorsement added, my endorsement override. I have that already stored on my PQ so I don't need to add anything. I click on issue. Passenger security data required. Yes, yeah, certainly, because the itinerary is different, right? It's a new itinerary. So let's go and do it right now. Here at the PNR, security information, secure flight, type of secure flight, secure flight. I add it one more time. Gender and add to the piano. One of the things I like about Sabre Red 360 is not only the graphical itself, as you see here, but also the fact that it gives me or tell me, it telling me what is missing. I, as soon as I add it, I can continue with the workflows. It's not cutting the workflow. It's just telling me, hey, add this, and then you can continue. And then, and I retrieve again. And then go into the workflows, issue ticket MD, issue the PQR, then click on select, and I issue. There you go. And then I close and I go in here into my luggage and I do an retrieve just in case. There are no changes made to the PNR, so I can ignore and retry now. Ignore and retrieve. Sorry. And I go into ticket and I have my. Ticket, the ticket that I issue and void, the new ticket, that now is exchange, or the original ticket, sorry, and then my exchange ticket here that has 
that is open. And this is automated exchanges, and this is guaranteed by SAFE. If you face any problem with this ticket, we take care of that. We will do the fight for you. Questions or comments, Leandro? Yes, we have a couple of questions. Um, one is from Jemima. <clears throat> She's say, uh, saying, I am trying to do a reissue and getting the message reissue not allowed, voluntary fee rules changed. Please advise what uh, why this could be. <clears throat> reissue not allow. Voluntary, voluntary fee rules changed. Voluntary fees rules change. Let me see. Voluntary fee rules change. Actually, I don't know. We will need to look for it uh, and see what is it. Because we should not allow voluntary fee rules change can mean different things. Uh, my suggestion would be to look for that uh, error on Finder and see what the causes can be. And if there is no information on Finder for that error, to contact our saver help us support through a case for them to check it. That would be my answer in this case, sorry. No problem. And just uh, adding to your to your response, in our uh, follow-up messages that I don't know, uh, Jemima, if you attended yesterday and the day before, uh, but we have sent the the follow up um, email uh, with additional information for the the all the participants from uh, Tuesday in the air module. There we added the the steps on how to create a case uh, with our with our help desk, okay, with our product support. Uh, anyways, once uh, we end this uh, this meeting, we will send also. Uh, the recap of, of this event and we will add that information as well in the in the PDF uh, presentation you will find at the end uh, the steps on how to create a case in order for you to report this uh, this issue in particular okay uh, Carlos I also have a question from uh, Duane uh, why does the PCR not have a section to add the security code like when you do an initial issue of a ticket? That is an excellent question. I really don't have an answer uh, on that. And actually, it's the first time I I received that uh, that question. So it would be good to document that, Leandro, uh, and look for for, a, for the reason with uh, with the automated exchange uh, people, the automated exchange team. Okay, sure. Yes, I, I believe that I can I can make up the fact that. Uh, if it's the same credit card, you will not need it because you have the security code already. It's the first time, and it will be the same security code, right? What will happen if I issue with a different with a different uh, credit card? So it's a good question. We need to look for that information and give that information back to doing. Perfect, perfect. No problem. Uh, I just send you of uh, the internal messages, uh, Carlos. The question just for excellent for keep it handy. Okay. Excellent. And then uh, Mary is asking right now. Try to cre uh, try to create a PNR this morning with mm -hmm. with airline NK. Uh, and fares and fares were higher than Spirit website. Um, uh huh. So apparently the fare in Saver was higher than in the website. Is that correct, Marie? For an itinerary, a PAP ORD. Okay. Uh, what what may be the reason of this, uh, Carlos? Well, it depends. I mean, if I am issuing, if if I am seeing uh, an spirit. If, if I am seeing the spirit fares on Saber, and they go into the website, and the website has cheapest fares than than Saber, that 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 could be okay, or it could be an error. 
how could it be okay? It could be okay because uh, the airline is offering is not not offering everything on the GTS channel. Is offering some things and other things differently on the website. It could happen. It happened in the past with at least one of one airline. But when that happened, the airline was completely transparent and says that to the customers, right? His, the airline sent a message to all the customers, an official message from the airline saying, starting this date, I am showing this information on my website and I am showing this information on GDSs, right? So that would be one reason. The other reason is that it's a mistake, that something is wrong. and then if you find that information, you need to report that information to us. You go into Saber Central, open a case and says, this is what Saber shows, this is what the website is showing. And that information is taken by our Saber help desk, is go into our uh, fair desk and our fair specialist will check onto it and we'll see that information and, and we'll talk to the airline about that. Is something wrong on Saber? We fix it. If something wrong on the airline side because of, uh, because they they are missing something, we contact them, we work with them, and we resolve the issue. Uh, if it's a commercial thing, that's outside GDS. It's a commercial thing, a commercial decision, which is which is which could be uh, perfectly possible. But the best way here is to do a report, do a case on Saber Central, and allow us to talk to the airline with your examples and, and and we go back to you and said, okay, this is the result. It was a mistake, it's already fixed. It's something commercially on the airline. These are the reasons they they expose. So it's not wrong. It's just a decision of the airline. But please do a report on Saber Central, do a case and allow us to analyze that for you. Okay, any other questions? Perfect. I you know that that's all the questions that we have. Uh, for the ones, it, just a general uh, reminder for the ones that were not able to participate on the previous uh, encounters from Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, those are already uploaded in our YouTube channel. I will share in a moment the link uh, of the chat so you can watch it on demand uh, and share it with your with your colleagues if you would like to. That's it, uh, Carlos, uh, you can continue. Okay, um, I think we, we are not going to have, a, uh, we, we don't have much time left, but that's that's expected because of because of the topic of exchanges. However, uh, I would like to do um, well, what we consider, uh, sorry, the other topic, the other topic that is a refund here, right? Uh, now, take, into, to take this in your mind, because uh, we will do our best to have uh, the information uh, as a set, as a, P as, as a PDF presentation for you. And on that presentation, you will see more information, right? But, but take this into consideration. There will be situations where automated exchanges is not going to work, right? Because it's not an, uh, it's not an automated exchange. It's something that the airline has approved, right? I talk to the airline and the airline allow me to do it. I have an authorization from the airline. On those cases, I need to go and do a quick reference and exchange, which is not graphical, it's cryptic. And on that tool, I have the ability to do refunds, manual refunds, right? The automated refund feature is uh, it, it, it's with guarantee from Sabre and the uh, schedule change reissue as well. Uh, and uh, those, those are very, very simple to do. But because of the time, I will just go into uh, into quick reference and exchange. Okay, so I have here my PNR and I have here my ticket. Remember? Now I'm going to exchange this again, but for any reason, I can I cannot use automated exchanges. So now I'm going to click here and I'm going to modify and I'm going to modify the date again. 
and I would say, you know what? He's not coming on the fourth uh, to Atlanta. He's going into the um, let's say 11 of October, and I'm going to do my change. If everything is okay, I will get the change. And here I have, right? Now, since I am not able to use automated exchanges, I need to do quick reference, which is now. Whiskey for Romeo, ticket record four. That would be. And here in this manual, uh, manual, manual tool, which is quick reference and exchanges, I have the ability to do an exchange manually or a refund manually. I want to do an exchange, so I'm going to do X and X because X is for exchange, and I will do click on next. This is all manual. I have to know everything. The system is not going to check anything here except the mathematics. Oh, but this have a change fee amount. It has, I have to know. How much is it? A hundred. And how am I going to collect this change fee? I'm going to collect this as an EMD. Invalid change fee amount. Oh, because it doesn't have um, decimals. Okay. How am I going to collect this change fee? As a tax, as a total, or as an EMD? We saw it that an EMD, so it's not a task, it's, it's not a total. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to do next. And as you see here, change fee EMD. So the system will issue an EMD with that hundred amount. And it's going to be paid on credit card. And the credit card number is. And the expiration is. And there is an approval code, and I'm going to do retain. The valid character is CZ number. What do I did? Oh, I believe I have to do. And then there's no more approval code. Let's see that now. Transaction retained. So if I do WPQS, I have a PQR here, the PQR number three, which is the manual one. Display PQR three. And here it is. With an additional collection of 100, which is this amount. Let's see, move down. Change fee, 100. So this is the difference in the fare. I have my change fee, 100, fee collected on an EMD with this form of payment. If I execute this, it will issue, it will exchange my ticket and it will issue an EMD with that 100 amount. I can exchange it, I can do it, yes. If I go into the workflows, it's exactly the same. Issue my ticket or EMD and I have here my other PQR. I do click here and I continue, okay? This is an, uh, another way of doing the exchanges when I do have to do it manually, right? Because I have an authorization, because it's a special condition, because it's a, it's a scheduled change and I have to do exchanges to zero. This would be, right? The information you're going to receive, the deck is more rich in information and has more scenarios in here. Just because of the time uh, constraints that we have, I am not going that far, but the document has that information for you. Now, let's say that I have to make a refund. I will do the same, WFR ticket record four. But instead of doing exchange, I will do a refund. R for refund, X on next. I am refunded everything in here. 
but maybe that's not true because there is a change fee amount here, all right, a penalty or a fee or whatever. So if there is an amount of money that, that I am not going to refund, I have to sum up here. If I have a hundred for penalty and a hundred as a fee of the airline, administrative fee, let's say, is 200. So I put 200 in here. The total amount of all the money that I am not going to refund to the airline, sorry, to the passenger. The airline knows exactly that this 200 means 100 on penalty, 50 on, on, this, uh, on this fee, and another 50 on, uh, on an administrative uh, charge. And I do click on next. And then he knows already that it's going to be refunded to the credit card. But there is another form of payment here. So I have now, by the system, the ability to uh, refund this in two forms of payments if I want. Carlos, uh, from, Mark is, yes. is telling us how to perform an exchange with refundable residual amount. Oh, okay. You cannot do it. <laughs> Uh, if you have a refundable, a residual amount, and that amount is refundable to the customer, my belief is that by BSP, you are not able to do it. You don't have a way to issue a document, you as an agency, issue a document for money in favor of the customer. If you have that situation, you need to go to the airline. The airline, the airline is the one that issue it. Now, what are the exceptions? If the airline has activated that feature on uh, on the exchange uh, on the exchange product, so for example, here in Latin America we have Avianca. Avianca has activated that feature. So when you have a residual amount in favor of the passenger, you do the exchange, and the exchange process also issue an EMD with that amount in favor of the customer. But that is something the airline has activated. And it's done because of the airline allows us, allows allows to do it. If the airline doesn't have that, you are not able because you don't have a way to issue an EMD uh, with that. Now, by by default. Now, if the airline says to you, "Yes, you can do it. Here are the codes for you to do it manually," then you can do it a manual EMD for that. But that's a different process. You have to run the mask of EMDs and fill in the blanks. It's, it's a mask on the system. So there is a way to do it. Yes, it's a manual way. And only and only if the airlines allows you to do it manually. If not, the only way to do it is if the airlines activate that feature or just the airline do it. Am I? Am I Am I clear? Maybe I maybe maybe I made I make it harder to understand. I don't know. I think it was clear, but Mark, if you would like to confirm it on the chat. Apart from that, uh, yeah, it is uh, it is clear. Mark says. Uh, apart from okay. that, uh, there's okay. no other other question in the chat. Okay, there are no more. Okay, so let's say that I'm going to pay this amount and do it a hundred here. And a hundred here. Hopefully by cash and it will do next. Let's see if it's possible. Yes. So it takes all the information on my ticket and I do my refund here. If I do, if I change, if, uh, if I do hit, if, uh, if I do hit enter now, the refund is will, the refund will be performed. The refund is not a store previously. It just goes through. It will generate a PQR for refund. So you, you, you have uh, re recorded that information of your refund, but you don't have the ability to store the refund fair first and then review it. Okay. So that would be basically exchanges and refunds in a manual way. 
automated refunds is different because it's, uh, it's supported by us. And it's just an entry to perform the entry and the, and the, and the refund is performed, but it will depend on the airline. The airline needs to do something on their side to allow us to issue it. To, to, to use automated refunds. That information you will have it on the deck that you will receive as part of this of this session. There you will see examples of, on, on the tool and how, and how to use it. It's very, very simple. It's far less complicated than this. It's just one entry and you will see it's, it's pretty good. And the same with the schedule change ratio. If you have to do an exchange because of, a, of a schedule change, right? The, air, the airline changed the hours and you need to exchange your ticket to zero. Uh, the schedule change reissue will ask for you. Now, keep in mind that schedule change reissue is a premium feature, so it has a, it has a cost implied. Automated exchanges and automated refunds has also cost, but the cost on those cases is $1 per, per exchange or per, re, or per refund perform. Um, that is basically what I have just because of the matter of, because of the time constraints that we have, right? Uh, any other question or last comment that you have, have in the chat, uh, Leandro? Uh, yes, uh, no, you're right, uh, Carlos. I mean, one hour and 15 minutes or even two hours uh, is very little in order to, to address all the comments, all the questions that the customer may have, and all the all the features that Save Red 360 has. Uh, this is why we try to uh, divide the, the sessions in three different topics in order to uh, take uh, more advantage of each. But yeah, it's, it is never enough since it's a lot, a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, the exchanges is, is, is a huge topic because of yeah. different scenarios, yeah. Yeah, there, it is a huge topic. Uh, I have only a last question uh, from sure. the chat, uh, Carlos. Daisy it, uh, is asking us, what is the difference of applying uh, for a refund via Saver or via VSP? Oh, thank you for the question. It, it, it's very good that you address that point. And one, one thing that I missed to mention is the refunds, the WFR here, when I do this and I do RR here, it will process the refund. But prior to do this, you have to be sure that the airline accept refunds through GDS. So you need to call the airline and says, I'm going to refund this ticket on GDS. Do you accept refunds through GDS? If they say yes, go ahead. If they say no, do it on BSP. The refund is going to be performed anyway. If you perform the refunds through Saver, it will go into the BSP report and it will and everything and everything will flow that way. If you do it on BSP link, it will flow anyway. The the ability to do refunds on the GDS is is to avoid you to go to different places, right? You would, exchange your ticket here, you issue your ticket here, you refund your ticket here and everything is fine. But it's the airline the one that says, I accept uh, refunds on GDS. If they say no, please continue using your BSP link for refunds. That would be the answer to the question. Perfect, thank you very much, uh, Carlos. So no further question on my end. Okay, so what, uh, what is left of me is say thank you to you all. It's actually an incredible pleasure for me to be part of these initiatives and uh, also to, uh, to learn from you. I am, I am very pleased to, to have that chance. Thank you very much, Leandro, uh, for, for inviting me to, to share this. I will work on, on the details it's for you to be able to send the information to the customers, to, to these 48 attendees that we have today. And uh, again, rest assured that Saber 360 is very friendly as you see, and it has a lot of features. So in the future, we will probably have, you know, another session specifically for changes, or maybe they can go to, uh, to the channel, right? In the channel, we have already some sessions 
for, for exchanges that they can that they can review and they will have this for sure thank you very much Leandro thank you very much everyone no thank you very much Carlos I really appreciate uh, your time uh, and well we always say the same but I, I, I it is not it is not enough uh, thanks uh, for your presentation uh, it, I think it's very clear how you present it and how you address all our customer questions so we really appreciate uh, your efforts uh, for this webinar thank you very much no, thank you very much to you and uh, for all our participants we thank you for your time and participation today thank you for all your questions uh, all your comments uh, we really appreciate them it uh, well and um, in the mean uh, in the following 24 hours 24 48 hours we will send you as carlos was mentioned uh, the follow-up material including the powerpoint presentation the recording of the session so you can revisit or share it with your colleagues that uh, were not able to make it to this event uh, we also uh, advise you that the previous recordings the recording for the webinar uh, from a uh, Tuesday and from Wednesday that was air module and pricing module are already uploaded in YouTube channel. You can uh, visit those uh, link those videos and I we already shared uh, the links on the chat. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any uh, valuable uh, content to be loaded in future. Uh, we will send you as well the link to the customer satisfaction survey for this meeting it's very important for you that complete it as well as provide your candid feedback about uh, this initiative and let us know which uh, other topic you would like you would like to see tackled in the future please rest assured that we will make our effort to make to bring those uh, topics of your interest in the future agenda so thank you once again uh, for your time and it will be until uh, the next meeting thank you all Bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of your week.